Welcome again and thanks for joining us wherever you are and whenever you're getting to watch this video. My prayer is that you find what you're looking for as you're watching these videos as the time goes on. I was very encouraged last week by Pastor Trevor's message of hope and reminded through the scriptures not to worry. At the start of um, his message, um, he shared a story about when attacks come, if we're only then looking for scriptures in the Bible to help us overcome, for some of us, sadly, that time might be too late. Again, at the start of his message, Pastor Trevor kept on reminding us to strengthen our contact with Jesus every day. You see, once a week isn't going to work. We know the enemy doesn't just attack us on a Monday or a Wednesday. Um, and although we may have bad days, for some of us, those bad days are every day, which is why every day, every morning, we need to seek Jesus. In Psalm 63, the psalmist writes, O oh God, you are my God. Early will I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. My flesh longs for you in a dry and thirsty land where there is no water. Now, I don't believe that this scripture is saying if you're thinking about spending time with Jesus, then here's a good idea. Use the morning time. It's a good time, like some sort of good recommendation. But what it's actually saying and showing us is that we are in a dry and thirsty land with no water source in sight. We don't just require a drink. Our body, our flesh needs it. Our soul thirsts for it. Otherwise the body and the flesh will give up and lose its battle, the thirst. So when we wake up, we're just like the body and the flesh that needs water to survive. You see, it's not just a good recommendation, it's a need. We need this connection with Jesus before we're overcome by thoughts which lead us to losing the battle. That's why our first thoughts of the day need to be with Jesus. Oh God, you are my God. You see, we first recognize that there is only one God in our life and he is the true king and his name is Jesus Christ. When we recognize that Jesus is Lord over everything in our life, that puts everything in our life in its place. And that to me is the correct way to start your day to establish that connection early with Jesus, so that through that connection and contact with him, he can strengthen us when we need it and step in when we can't fight no more. You see, Jesus knows the fight we'll have. I spoke a few weeks back about Jesus knowing everything we get tempted with, as he himself was tempted by the devil himself. Jesus knew what he had to do when he entered the desert. He knew temptation was coming as he fasted and he saw it through to the end. The end being when the devil gave up and left Jesus. He knew what was ahead of him, even after the desert, especially when he arrived in Jerusalem. In Matthew chapter six, Matthew gives us an insight to the arrest of Jesus and the commitment to seeing the plan through to the end even though there was options available to Jesus. When they arrived to arrest Jesus, the scriptures tell us that they came up and they laid hands on Jesus and they seized him. Then one of those who was with Jesus stretched out his hand and drew a sword and struck a servant of the high priest and cut off his ear. Then Jesus said to him, put your sword back in its place for all those who take the sword will perish by the sword. Then Jesus says this, Do you not think that I cannot ask my father and he will at once send me more than 12 legions of angels to protect and fight for us? We see one legion of angels is about 5,000 and there were 12 of them including Jesus. So that's one legion each. That's more than 60,000 angels Jesus could have called upon from heaven to come down to protect and fight for them in the garden at that time. But as Jesus himself said, how then could the scriptures be fulfilled? Jesus knew the difference in going the distance. Moments before praying to God saying, if this cup cannot pass away from me unless I drink it, your will be done. Jesus went the distance many times for us and ultimately given his body to be beaten and bruised as a sacrifice. Now what I'm hearing people that they're saying right now is, 
we're just waiting for all this to be over. But do you ever feel like when you're waiting for something, sometimes it can be easier to give up rather than to keep going and seeing it through to the end? You see, right now, we need to go the distance in this situation to not give up, to keep on connecting with people, helping our friends and family, to not give up when the devil makes you feel like you're all isolated or you're all alone. You are not alone in this. We are all feeling the effects of self-isolation and social distancing. Whether you live alone in your house or you live in a house with four other people, we are all making sacrifices and being pushed to our limits at times. When we start to panic, we should remember the times God came through for us and helped us. So if he'd done it before, then surely he will come through for us again. We've come so far, making such a difference. I want to encourage you right now to not let your guard down and relax your distancing. Playing our part means we need to go the distance, until the time is right, until this virus is under control. Keep on praying for the people whose bodies are battling the virus or in recovery from it. Keep on praying for the frontline workers who are also battling against the virus, working with a duty of care, putting themselves at times in harm's way to help us and to help our loved ones. The church right now should be leading the way in praying earnestly against all the attacks from this current situation and from the effects of the virus itself. Because earnest prayers are when we pray with purpose. You know right now there are families praying with purpose about a relative who's sick with this virus. So, as the church, we too need to lift our voice. We too need to be seen as well as heard, praying earnestly for our community, our town, and for anyone who needs us right now. And I want to tell you that God is honoured by your persistence in not giving up, in going the distance. So when you get tempted to just do what you want to do, remember where our will captures us, His will sets us free. You can find freedom in isolation. You can find freedom in distancing. So when you get tempted to give up, don't. His will be done, not ours. This is a perfect time for the enemy to attack us all, to bring up our past and to scare us about the future. That's why it's so important to strengthen that connection with Jesus every day. This current situation will not be our future destination. Amen? It's no longer just about your past. It's no longer just about the bad stuff you left behind, the things you used to do that the enemy will try and bring up. It's way bigger than that now. It's now not about what we've done before lockdown, but about how we, the church, go forward into the future. It's about what we do new. The old is past, what's coming is a new beginning. Let me finish by paraphrasing one of the final parts of a prophecy we received many years ago. The shopkeeper has already closed his doors. The shelves have already begun to be stripped down. New packaging has already been looked at. It will soon be time to reopen and reveal the new shop in what will be a new era. Let's pray. Jesus, I give you thanks that every day you have something new for us. That every day when we seek you, You strengthen our relationship by giving us our daily bread and what's needed to get through that day. Help us as we go the distance. Strengthen us as we go the distance. Teach us as we go the distance. In your name we pray. Amen.